Under your feet, the moon is pulsing. You feel danger with every pore of your body. The lifeless satellite, or so you thought, stays still for a second before knocking you down to the ground with a powerful tremor. Is it a moonquake? For years, scientists believed the moon was completely inactive, but the newest evidence seems to suggest that this idea is totally wrong. Researchers from the University of Maryland have recently discovered 266 mysterious ridges on the far side of the moon. And these ridges likely point to recent geological activity. So, are we really talking moonquakes? Well, kind of. The ridges are located in volcanic regions that formed 3.2 to 3.6 billion years ago, but they appear much younger than expected, typically found in clusters of 10 to 40. They're often located in areas where the moon's surface is structurally weaker. Now, when astronomers speak about recent, don't take their words literally. They don't mean last year or even decade. Most models scientists created suggested that the moon's geological activity ended 2.5 to 3 billion years ago. But the new information hints at the possibility that these formations have been active within the last billion years. Some of the smaller ridges seem to have formed as recently as 200 million years ago. And that is considered relatively young on the moon's timescale. It means that the moon may still be experiencing geological changes today. These discoveries kind of challenge our understanding of the moon's history and evolution. But how did scientists come to these conclusions anyway? Researchers from the University of Maryland and the Smithsonian Institution used crater counting to estimate the age of lunar ridges. It works like this. Surfaces with fewer craters are younger. And the more craters some region has, the older it is. Plus, the analysis showed that some ridges cut through already existing craters, meaning they likely formed around 160 million years ago. In geological terms, this is very recent, suggesting that these ridge-forming processes may still be happening. Another cool thing is that the ridges on both the near and far sides of the moon are similar which means they may have formed through the same geological processes, having been shaped by the same forces. These forces might include the moon's gradual shrinking, thermal contraction, and shifts in its orbit. We'll talk about it a bit later. Another argument supporting the idea of a still active moon is decades-old data from the Apollo missions. They had already detected shallow moonquakes with the Apollo Lunar Seismic Experiment, recording 28 quakes ranging from magnitude 1.5 to 5. Researchers believe that these ridges may be linked to similar seismic activity. Now, about that bizarre shrinking of our natural satellite. Scientists believe the moon formed about 4.5 billion years ago when a Mars-sized object collided with early Earth. This catastrophic impact likely sent bunches of superheated material into space. Eventually, they came together and formed the moon. In its early years, the moon was just a molten world, shaking from intense volcanic and seismic activity. So, the moon used to be a molten mess floating through space. But when did it actually solidify? Scientists have finally figured it out, 4.43 billion years ago. This was a huge turning point, not just for the moon, but for Earth too. After all, the giant impact that formed the moon might have also been the final blow that made Earth stable enough to support life. In any case, billions of years passed. The moon gradually cooled and contracted. And now look at this modern day rocky sphere illuminating our nights. But the moon isn't completely rigid yet. It still keeps cooling. And this slow cooling of its core might be one possible reason for the moon's continued activity. As it cools, the moon's interior contracts, which leads to cracks and shifts in the crust. One of the clearest signs of this contraction is found in the lunar maria. See these large, dark patches on the moon? Those are called maria, areas formed when lava filled ancient asteroid impact craters and then solidified. Then, over time, the cooling and contracting crust created these wrinkle ridges. Another factor of the ongoing geological activity 
could be the Moon's gravitational interactions with Earth. Such non-stop powerful interactions likely create surface stress and trigger tectonic movements. It's all good and exciting, but can this activity on the Moon actually affect humans? In a sense, it can. The Moon has long been seen as a stable place for future bases and resource extraction. But the discovery of this ongoing geological activity is pretty worrying. If the surface is still shifting, future settlements, infrastructure, and mining operations could face serious risks. That's why, at the moment, we need seismometers and ground-penetrating radars to better understand these movements. It will allow us to assess potential dangers before any long-term missions begin. By the way, there's another potential problem future lunar missions might have to deal with, and it's moon dust, aka regolith. Apollo astronauts quickly learned that this jagged, sticky dust gets everywhere and can damage suits, equipment, and even health. A new study from Texas A&M engineers found another problem. When rockets land or take off, they kick up regolith, which can become a collision hazard, especially with many spacecraft bringing crews and cargo to the moon. Lunar regolith comes in all sizes, from tiny dust particles to large rocks. The main ingredient in moon dust is fine silicate materials, about 70 microns in size, like a human hair. They formed over billions of years as meteors and asteroids smashed into the Moon's surface, grinding much of it into powder. Unlike Earth, the Moon has almost no atmosphere. It's incredibly thin, so there's no wind or water to smooth out the dust. On top of that, constant exposure to solar wind has given the regolith an electrostatic charge, making it stick to anything it touches. Apollo astronauts quickly found this out the hard way. Moon dust clung to their suits, got tracked inside their landers, and stuck to everything. Worse, it became a health hazard, causing eye irritation and breathing problems inside their spacecraft. But at the moment, it seems like a problem for future us. A much more important issue is finding water to support future missions, and China is going to deal with it. It's getting ready for a big mission to look for hidden ice on the moon. As part of the Chang'e 7 mission in 2026, a flying robot will explore deep craters at the moon's south pole, where ice might be trapped. If they manage to confirm it, this could be a game changer for future lunar missions. Astronauts will have a water source and even fuel for space travel. The mission is a key step in China's plan to land astronauts on the moon within five years. While signs of water have been found before, like in soil samples from Chang'e 5's probe and observations by NASA and Indian spacecraft, scientists believe that deep ice deposits are the real key to supporting future missions. The south pole of the moon has some incredibly deep craters, and experts think ice could be hiding inside them. The flying robot will try to explore one or more of these craters after landing. If it does find the ice, it could make long-term moon missions much cheaper and more practical, helping astronauts live and work on the moon. Some scientists also think that this discovery could offer us some clues about extraterrestrial life. In any case, whether we find water on the moon and learn to deal with that pesky dust or not, the recent discovery of those young lunar ridges is a game changer. If the moon is still geologically active, it means we don't know as much about our closest neighbor as we thought. What else could the moon be hiding? Are we really prepared for the idea that this lifeless satellite might actually be more dynamic than we imagined? Future missions, which might not be as safe as we once believed, will probably show. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.